Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet ten inches tall. Official weight, 143.7 pounds. He is fighting out of Port Core in Wales, and he is making his professional mixed martial arts debut. Introducing Scott Tanker Pedersen. Standing opposite him in the cage. Fighting out of the red corner, he stands five feet nine inches tall. Official weight, 145.8 pounds. He is fighting out of Belfast in Northern Ireland. I'm into the cage, and this is his professional mixed martial arts debut. Introducing Matthew Elliott. Your referee in charge when the action begins, Mr. Daniel Moverheady. Referee Dan Moverheady about to get this one underway. Professional debuts on deck for Scott Pedersen and Matthew Elliott. Pedersen in the black trunks, Ready? Elliott in the white. Nice jab to start things off from Pedersen. Elliott coming right at him though, taking centre of the cage. Good combination from Pedersen, but we wondered how long it would take for the takedown. And the first attempt, Matt Elliott with less than 30 seconds on the clock. Yeah, Pedersen doing a pretty good job of getting that underhook and trying to stuff that takedown attempt, but Elliott doing a good job of staying back on there, moving onto the legs, getting into a position to lift him off the ground. The easiest way to make sure the opponent has no base is to take all base away by lifting him off the ground. But doing a really good job is Scott of getting his back to the fence and using that fence to stand back up, but taking a lot of little strikes as he tries to do so. So this is exactly where Elliot wants this fight, I imagine. Yeah, when you go through those credentials yeah. and, you know, international experience in judo and wrestling, you know he's going to want to be up close and personal from the get-go, and that's exactly what we've seen from Matthew Elliott. I always get very excited when you see that, that judo word uh, on the credentials because you see some of these judo guys just manage, some of them can't put it together with the nogi, with the MMA, and some of them just can. And you just, every once in a while, you see a guy with real good judo credentials, and they'll be in a position like this and be throwing their opponent, flipping him upside down, chucking him around the cage, and that's kind of what I'm hoping we're gonna see tonight. Yeah, it does lend itself to a real bullying style in, in the grappling phase of MMA. Yeah, well, it's, it's a real big difference between the older styles of judo and wrestling compared to jiu-jitsu. Judo and wrestling, the physicality is a big part of the sport, whereas jiu-jitsu was really sold as something where physicality is unimportant, which obviously isn't true, but it is sold, and that's the narrative with jiu-jitsu. With wrestling with judo, it's about being big, strong, and bullying your opponent. That's what we're seeing here from Matthew Elliott. Doing a very good job is uh, Scott of being able so far to, you know, kind of on the defensive, but doing a pretty good job of standing on his feet for now. There's one thing that Elliot needs to be careful here. He's chewing up a lot of time, and while that's all well and good, the judges at cage side are obviously looking to score big moments, impactful moments, and looking for strikes. So, you know, he took a few shots early on there, and he's not done anything that's going to really score in the judges' eyes at this stage. You know, it, it needs to be a big judo-style yeah. slam with, you know, some, some potential to cause damage there for him to get points off that. He's not going to get points in the judges' eyes just controlling Pedersen up against the cage. Yeah, he did a good job. Uh, Matt Elliott did a good job for a second there of getting those hands connected around the body. Usually, once those hands are connected, it gives you superior control and the ability to kind of dominate the position and get the takedown from there. But Scott Pedersen doing a really great job of using that wizard, that right arm, to be able to keep himself up on his feet and facing his opponent. But right now, this is a very dangerous position. Elliott now has the back. He's already sunk a hook in. It's one of these things that you see and be very, uh, very interesting in how the opponent uses the hook from standing because, of course, it gives you the option to jump straight onto the back. But what you can also do is lock up the body and use that leg to stop the opponent's legs from moving and drag them back down to the ground. Had to able to force the break there. And I think Elliott caught him with uh, a nice right hand on the break there. Yeah, interesting decision to break there from Elliot. Um, obviously decided that was the best route to go. Oh, yeah, he's got to put points on the board with, you know, in the last 90 seconds of the round, but 
Pedersen finding his man perfectly with the range there. Caught him just on the end of those shots. Look for the uppercut, but Hook clicked himself. Pedersen is doing a job of getting out of that danger zone and finding his range very easily with the jab. Nice leg kick landed there and a, a stiff jab from Elliot, but Pedersen firing back. Richard Shaw in the corner there, calling for the one-two straight down the middle, and as his man gave it to him, there was the first takedown of the contest from Matthew Elliott. Yeah, beautiful level change there, and I think uh, a, a good bit of fight IQ, changing up the strategy, that clinch wrestling up against the fence. Penderson was doing a fantastic job of standing on his feet, so uh, Elliott decides to go for a takedown in the centre of the cage, and now he's uh, passing the side control here. Unfortunately, only 20 seconds on the clock, really no time to work whatsoever, but that's definitely going to add a little bit of confidence uh, in the head of Matthew Elliott. Yeah, it could be a case of regroup and reset in the second round unless he can land a few big shots here, but Pedersen escapes. And you talk about confidence, confidence for Pedersen now knowing that he can get up from underneath Matthew Elliott. Yeah, well, you know, one of the things that I was thinking um, towards just before that takedown in that, uh, at the end of that first round was, is Elliot going to feel a little bit uh, lacking confidence now that he's wrestled, he's got to his strong position and been un unable to take it down and finally finds a way of making it work and shooting that beautiful, beautiful level change there. Here's one of the earlier takedown attempts. Scott Pennington doing a fantastic job against the fence and staying on his feet. We had a takedown early here, but immediately Scott was able to use that fence to get back to the feet. And in the end, uh, Elliot decided that it would actually be in his best interest to release. Pedersen again here, able to disengage. And for me, that was some of his best work of the round, his ability to get out of those dangerous spots and then immediately get back into the striking range. Yeah, Elliot landed some good shots too in, uh, in a couple of those exchanges, but for, for my money, Pedersen is going to be ahead on the scorecards going into this second round. And let's see if anything changes in terms of the game plan here from Matthew Elliott. Yeah, that really is the question, and, and, and it's so interesting. A lot of people, they think, they talk about wrestling, they talk about takedowns. It's a nice left hand from Elliot there in that exchange. Yeah. They talk about wrestling, they talk about takedowns, but they don't realise that there's two very different styles of trying to take someone down. You can try and take them down in the middle of the cage like you just saw there, or you can try and get their back on the fence and drag them to the ground. And at the beginning of that first round, that was obviously the strategy, and it's going to be interesting to see if Matt Elliott decides to continue to try and shoot out in the open opposed to trying to drive, which we'll see again, instead of driving into the fence, but in a very, very high position, he gets him on the ground, but Scott doing a good job of not conceding that takedown yet he's still upright and a big cut looked like it's opened up somewhere yeah struggling to see whether that's uh, maybe the nose of, uh, of Matthew Elliott so it could, it could be that he, that he caught his nose coming in or it could be one of the shots from Pedersen that did that damage but yeah, what you're seeing here from uh, Pedersen is an attempt for a wrestler's switch. He's using that left arm to try and control the hips. Some very nice, you know, obviously offensive grappling from Elliott there, but some really, really nice defensive grappling from Pedersen as well. Did land a, a nice shot before changing levels with that takedown, did Matthew Elliott. He's still very much in this fight and very much has roots to victory against Pedersen. Yeah, and, and what you're seeing here is exactly what we saw for the first couple of minutes of that first round. This exact same position, slight angle change, we've got the underhook, at one point he even had a double underhook position, but Pedersen doing a really fantastic job of utilising that wizard that we're seeing that he's doing with the right arm there to stop uh, uh, Elliot from being able to actually successfully get a takedown. And as someone with those judo background, that wrestling background, you've got to think that Matthew Elliott must have thought that if he gets his man in a clinch, he's going to be able to take him down. And so far, he's really struggling. Pedersen uh, looking to get the takedown, looking to link the hands behind the hips. 
This is a pretty strong position. The hands are linked. There's a little bit of a guillotine attempt there. There's still a possibility, but uh, Elliot doesn't really look like he's aggressively attacking the neck from this position. Circling around to the back here. This is actually a pretty damn good position for Scott Pedersen to potentially get the takedown from here. Keep his base nice and wide there was Elliot. There you go. You see many years of judo and wrestling in that base there. A fantastic job from Matt Elliott to uh, stay on his feet off that single leg attempt. He really wants to work on trying to get himself back square to his opponent from here. But of course, with the judo, this is the thing. When you've got a judo guy, you can get throws from this position. They're positions that you don't see very often because it turns the back. So a lot of people don't do it in grappling and don't do it in MMA. But it does mean if someone has the back, you still have the ability to generate power and get a throw. Matt Elliott for a second there, looks like he's thinking of uh, tying up a, uh, a Kimura on the right arm of Scott Pedersen. Sure, Elliott's probably confident giving the back though, because he trains back defence every day, that's, that's the nickname, that's right, BDE? The, yeah, that's what we, we came to the conclusion that we assume that BDE stands for back defence every day. So we're, we're about to see if BDE really does stand for back defence every day. You talk about that, the high level uh, competition that he's had outside of MMA on the mats. That really does breed a, a champion's mindset. And, you know, we, we often see it in the collegiate wrestlers coming through into MMA. You know, this is a guy who, who I'm sure has been in bad spots before and, and he's used to just pushing that extra mile. And in a very similar vein, Scott Pedersen competing internationally as an amateur, he, he's been in those exact same spots. This really is a fantastic contest for both these guys making their debuts here on Cage Royals. Yeah, this is really impressive, actually. Scott looking, basically looking exactly how uh, Matt was looking, but Matt's actually starting to look a, a little bit fatigued in his position here. You're not seeing the same amount of fight out of him that you saw before. A nice reversal, and he switches, and he actually manages to get the takedown from here. Very, very nicely done. The question is, can he actually secure a position? The only position we've seen came at the end of that first round, off that real nice level change from the strike and exchange. Another attempt to arrest the switch here, unsuccessful, but Scott just doing a fantastic job once again of getting back to his feet. This must be very, very frustrating for Matthew Elliott. Pedersen has been the distance many, many times as an amateur and successful on nine of those occasions. So nine of the 16 wins coming by way of the judges scorecards. Of course, this is his first time going the full 15 minutes. So a slightly different dynamic there, but he's got a lot of experience in MMA coming out for that third round. And, you know, often when we see these novice guys, they've not been to a decision that many times and could very well be the deciding factor as we head into the third and final frame here. Lovely jab from Pedersen really did find his range well early on. Nice level change here from Matthew Elliott after landing a couple of nice shots himself, it has to be said then. Yeah, a very nice takedown again. The only way he's managed to off the cage get the takedown is by elevating his opponent up into the air. But once again, uh, Pedersen was able to get straight back to his feet. Nice knee to the jaw there from Scott Pedersen. And it does look like, Dan, the, the, the blood coming from the nose of Matthew Elliott. So is that going to affect his breathing as we head into deep waters here? Certainly doesn't look particularly fatigued or any more than you would expect him to be after a couple of hard rounds. Yeah, and they certainly have been hard rounds. People don't understand how draining that wall wrestling can be with that clinch position the entire time very very draining nice level change there and Pedersen tries to defend but that's a big slam that's that's potentially going to be a scoring takedown yeah, and once again, you can see the only way he's able, and he knows, and he's got that power from that wrestling, from that judo, he's got the strength to elevate his man, even in the third round. This is one of the better positions he's got now. It's very, very interesting, very intrigued as to see what Pedersen is going to do from here. He's got around the waist. You can see he, he doesn't want to concede his back to the ground. He wants to sit up. You see how he's not allowing himself. A lot of people would give up that side control and try and play a guard position or something. Pedersen doing a very, very good job of getting up, keeping his shoulders off the mat even his back not flat on the mat and he manages once again to get back to his feet this must be incredibly frustrating for someone with the uh, grappling pedigree of Matthew Elliott 
Elliot, of course, training out of Fight Academy Island. Training partner of someone we're going to see later on here tonight, Mr. Paul Hughes, and of course, another Cage Warriors favourite, Joe McColgan. Now, Joe's watching here tonight. Looking forward to seeing Mr. McColgan back in the cage, hopefully sooner rather than later, for the big win of the last trilogy against another man we're going to see later on this evening in Kieran Lester. But it's safe to say that Elliot's been involved in, in what I'm sure has been a very high intensity camp for this one. Okay, so this is the most significant grappling exchange that we've seen. Uh, Matt Elliott kept on going for this kind of, this just bullying, this throwing position with this body lock. Finally, it pays off and he's taken the back. This is a fantastic position. Both hooks are locked in. You know, three minutes to work. This is a long time to work. Uh, so this is definitely the most significant grappling that we've seen. And it's a very good chance that Matthew Elliott is going to be able to secure a submission from here. It's going to be very interesting to see whether Scott Pedersen has been training back uh, back defense every day. Pedersen trying to scramble now. Looking to just come out from under the armpit here. Yeah, he looks like he's trying to tie up one of those legs. The position that, uh, that, that Elliot is in is kind of an awkward position because he has his leg trapped because usually he'd want to bring his leg round to the other side and try and go back to that back position, deciding instead to try and do some damage in the strikes. Oh, now Elliot's landing some shots. Now he's getting some ground and pound working. Pedersen pops up, but Elliot immediately back on the right leg. Yeah, you, you can see the same thing he's been doing in all of these takedown attempts. You see that right arm uh, in between the legs of his opponent. He tries to use that to turn the angle and stop the opponent's hips from being able to follow. But a very, very nice position here. The problem with this is, where is there to take your opponent when you've got them so close to the fence and they're upright? It's very, very hard to grapple. When you grapple, if you're not used to grappling against the wall, against the fence, this is a position that you will never see. Jiu-Jitsu people just grappling on the mat will never see that sitting bolt upright position supported by the wall. Once again, uh, Pedersen uh, able to get back to his feet, but a much stronger round in the grappling for uh, Matthew Elliott. Real gritty performance from both these young men. We have a, a, a Kimura attempt on the left arm of Matthew Elliott here. Pedersen, he's got the hands, I can't quite see if he's got those hands connected there. This is kind of sort of a classic submission that people go for when someone is behind them. He releases it to try and get up. Yeah, it looks like he's, he's let, let that go completely. A lot of the time it's just a, a bit of a desperation submission here. We get back to this position that I was talking about with Pedersen upright against the fence. And so far just done a great job of getting back to the feet, but Matthew Elliott really on him like a rash today. Yeah, Pedersen really has done a good job and using his surroundings well. Another big takedown from Elliott. 40 seconds on the clock. Can he do something with it? You know, both of these guys just going, you know, in, quite unbelievable that they're still hitting these very high percentage sorry uh, high energy output techniques this late in the fight uh, both these guys in very good condition definitely the most successful round that Matthew Elliott's had which is interesting usually if you're gonna have a successful grappling round it's gonna come early but it's coming late for the Arjuda wrestling man Matthew Elliott well that's what we, we talked about Dan those competitions where you know you're out there for a week or two weeks and you're competing multiple times and you know by the last match your your body's aching your body's broken but you've still got to score that point that's where that championship mindset comes in and what a contest between these two guys you wouldn't think it was a pair of <laughs> MMA debut sons in our first contest here at the trilogy high level stuff from Scott Pedersen and Matthew Elliott. Big takedown here from Elliott early on in that round. Yeah, I think we saw three, during the fight, we saw three completely lifted up and big takedowns like this. And this time really managing to get the position to stick, but just for a little while. So this was the best grappling that we saw in the entire fight. He drags his man towards the ground as he bases to try to defend the takedown. Elliot manages to come around and take the back. Unfortunately, he wasn't able to really do anything with this. The defense of Pedersen was fantastic, but still the most significant grappling position that we saw. And another look at this big takedown. Beautiful stuff from Matthew Elliott. And that's potentially the kind of takedown that, that might make an impact on the judges' scorecards. We talk about a takedown that has impact and does damage well. 
and you get hoisted up onto a dude's <laughs> shoulders and, and dumped down to the mat of velocity. Not really much more you can ask for. Once a wrestler, always a wrestler. Is that pose in the centre of the cage. Well, our judges' scorecards are in, so all that remains is to throw it to our MC, Mr. Hal Chaplin, to make the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of mixed martial arts action, we go to our judges' scorecards. All three judges score this bout 29 28 in favour of your winner by way of unanimous decision in the red corner, Matthew Elliott! Matthew Elliott with a big green tick on the ledger. The first one of what I'm sure will be an outstanding professional career. What a performance to get his first professional victory here at Cage Warriors. And listen, all credit to Scott Pedersen as well. Yeah. What a contest that was. Matthew Elliott celebrating with his team, but we have got plenty more action coming up and we're gonna move on immediately to a welterweight bat between Josh Plant and Matt Figlak. 